Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. You've probably heard that the all-new Super Duper Windows 11 is coming because you're so happy with Windows 10 with all its updates, crashing everything and deleting your files and all that sort of thing, that naturally when you heard that Windows 11 is coming, you, you, you know, fell off your chair. So um, the big question is, uh, there's this thing called the TPM, the Trusted Platform Module. Microsoft announced Windows 11 is coming out, and of course there's all this hullabaloo about will Windows 11 actually run on my PC? The short answer is that yes, it will run on your PC. Uh, I'll give the slightly longer answer now. Uh, there are just a few details and a few important things to keep in mind because we're dealing with Microsoft here. So, uh, first we'll take a quick look at Windows 11, and then I'll talk about the hardware requirements and software requirements and that sort of thing. And then I will show you what you can do, uh, especially if you want to use the test version of Windows 11 and play around with it, what you need to do to get around the current uh, blocks to installing the test version of Windows 11. So I'll put links down in the description to all this, but here you go. This is the official Windows 11 page, and look at that, that beautiful blue flowery thing and the new Windows logo. It's just beautiful. So we can scroll down. Oh, introducing Windows 11. Um, you'll, you can see that there's an all new redesigned start menu. Um, windows have curved corners, rounded corners. That is, it's a new icons. I mean, it's okay. Really, Windows 11 is just Windows 10 with a facelift. They're putting a fresh coat of paint on it. Uh, there are a few new features. Um, Windows 11 helps you get a fresh perspective. Uh, one of the new features is this, uh, when you're snapping windows, uh, this used to be a power tool that you could install in Windows 10. Now they're going to incorporate it so you can easily snap your, you know, windows in these different configurations. Um, they want you to use Microsoft Teams instead of Zoom, so of course they're promoting their product. And look how happy, look how happy she is. Oh, it's wonderful, yeah. Um, Another big bit of news is they're bringing gadgets back. You may remember uh, gadgets from the uh, previous Windows generations. Um, you can use 8 Gadget Pack to have gadgets in Windows 10, as I do. But basically they're bringing gadgets back and they're also going to have an updated app store. This app store will allow you to install Android apps, but it's a little bit scary because... <laughs> <clears throat> scary and silly. Because first you have to log into uh, Amazon in order to install Android apps from the Amazon App Store. And before you can do that, you also have to install the Amazon App Store app. So, of course, that sounds good on the surface because, wow, I'll be able to run Android apps on Windows 11. Except you have to jump through 57 different hoops in order to be able to install an Android app. And, of course, the Amazon App Store, in terms of Android apps, it's kind of crap compared to the Google App Store. So, yeah, that's, that's not very exciting. But, well, I guess it's nice. So moving along here, then, okay, there's some gaming stuff that's not very clear at the point. Uh, a PC for each of us. Isn't that nice? Uh, blah, 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 blah. And then here's kind of the... The important part, get ready. Windows 11 isn't here yet, but will be coming later this year. If you're excited, there are some things you can do in the meantime to get ready. And so finally they show the minimum system requirements. And yeah, um, one gigahertz dual core processor, four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of larger storage space. Most of these things here are pretty much like a no brainer. Of course, if you have a relatively modern computer, you've got most of these things and you'll be all set. The part that has caused some uh, chaos is the uh, sort of the UEFI secure boot capable uh, system firmware. That's not really an issue, uh, as I'll talk about in a second. The big one is the TPM, the Trusted Platform Module. They say that, oh, it requires version 2.0. So we come over here to the compatibility for Windows 11 page, and this is very interesting because this page was just updated sometime within the last 24 hours, and now it says System Firmware Trusted Platform Module version 2.0. Uh, I'll explain exactly what that is in a second, but uh, the point is that this page used to actually say, as of 24 hours ago, there were hard requirements and soft requirements, and the hard requirement was TPM version 2.0, and the soft requirement was TPM 1.2, and this, if, if, you, if you didn't meet all these requirements, it was still going to install 
Windows 11 would still install on your device. Now, as of as just this morning, they say, oh, wait, no, uh, we changed that, and now it's, uh, yeah. You can see this article has been updated to correct the guidance around the TPM requirements for Windows 11. Uh, if you want to read more about TPM, um, there's this interesting link. Again, I'll include this all down in the description, but yeah, it's uh, it's all a bit nutty. And this is where it gets confusing, because what's happening is Microsoft says Windows 11 is coming, it will be released uh, around the holiday season, around Christmas of 2021, and of course they're saying it's going to be a free upgrade, so whether you have Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, whatever, you'll be able to upgrade to Windows 11, most likely for free. But uh, then they say, get this, this uh, PC Health Check app, and in the Introducing Windows 11 box, you can click Check Now, and uh, for many people, it's saying, no, sorry, your computer is not compatible with Windows 11. Uh, in most cases, the reason it's saying this is because you either do not have TPM or you do not have TPM enabled on your computer. Now, if you Google this problem, you will find all kinds of people who've posted these absolutely ridiculous guides where they're saying, right, download the Windows 11 test ISO, the insider uh, test version, and you want to decompress it. And then you want to download the Windows 10 ISO, and you want to decompress that. And you want to copy this one file over into the Windows 11 ISO, and then regenerate the Windows 11 test ISO, and then you'll be able to install it. Right. Or you could do what I'll show you in just a second and go into your BIOS slash UFI settings and simply enable firmware TPM and you'll be fine. So, okay, what exactly is TPM? Trusted Platform Module is, um, it's, it's one of two different things. Basically what it does is it's a little, uh, it's a hardware thingy that includes like a secret key uh, that's kind of uh, it's it's burned in the hardware, so it's it's not changeable. And they use it for things like okay, if you're going to use BitLocker drive encryption, uh, your private key, if you will, is this this hardware key stored on the motherboard of your computer. It's, it's a security thing. It's to prevent hacking. It's 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 actually a good thing. Uh, it's not a hundred percent bulletproof. There have been uh, known hacks, but uh, having it is better than not having it. So. The thing about TPM is that it's been around for ages, and usually you have TPM where there's like a little header on your motherboard, and you can buy a little hardware TPM module and stick it on, and of course that's what everyone is assuming you need to do. But it turns out that for roughly um, maybe 10 years or so, maybe a little less, uh, both Intel and AMD have included essentially TPM. They don't necessarily call it that, but they've essentially included TPM in the, their processors. So it depends on the motherboard you have, but in most cases, all you need to do is go into the BIOS and enable firmware TPM, which I'll show you an example of that in a second, and boom, you can run that health check again, and then you'll see this. Oh look, you can install Windows 11. So you don't need to be downloading any ISOs and doing any crazy things because it's actually pretty simple to solve it. But the truth is that really, when Windows 11 is finally released, there's like a 99% chance that, yes, you're going to be able to install Windows 11 on it. Uh, Microsoft is not dumb. Yes, the left tentacle doesn't know what the right tentacle is doing, and so, you know, web pages talking about hard and soft requirements are changing every 24 hours, and no one knows what's going on. Um, but that's not any reason to freak out. Uh, in fact, uh, back in the days, just before Windows 8 was released, Microsoft said that uh, UEFI and Secure Boot were going to be required to install Windows 8. Well, by the time Windows 8 was released, n no, that wasn't the case at all. And again, the, kind of the same thing happened back then. It was a little less uh, crazy and, or hysterical <laughs> than it is today, but uh, the same thing happened with Windows 10. Oh, we're going to require, I think it was UFI, and, and I think they might have actually mentioned the TPM thing. Yeah, w when Windows 10 came, if, if your computer was purchased any time within the past 10 years, you're pretty much safe. You'll be able to run Windows 11. You can pretty much take that to the bank. And the reason is because Windows 10, it has problems, as you well know, with updates. Um, I posted a video on how to fix Windows updates in many cases. The sheer number of people who have posted comments and written me emails saying, oh my god, it's horrible, I can't update, blah, 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 thank you for your solution. It's like insane. So Microsoft knows this, and of course they're focusing all their energy on Windows 11 now, so they're not going to make an operating system that no one can install. But because it's Microsoft, 
the left arm doesn't know what the right arm is doing and vice versa, so of course we have kind of a disaster, which is pretty standard for Microsoft. So, pretty much all you need to do if you want to upgrade to Windows 11 this holiday season is just sit and wait. If you actually want to prepare your computer a little bit, um, or if you want to try the test version of Windows 11, there are a few simple things you can do to uh, update your configuration. You can enable TPM, you can make sure UEFI uh, booting is enabled, you can even enable Secure Boot, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So, if you want to uh, make sure the TPM, the firmware TPM is enabled, uh, if it is available, you just go into your, your BIOS settings. It's, uh, it's actually the UEFI, but uh, you know, you reboot your computer, you tap delete, the F2 key, whatever. That depends on the manufacturer of your computer or motherboard. In this case, I have an Asus motherboard. I built the computer myself. So when the computer is booting, before you see the Windows logo, tap the delete key. You go into advanced here, and then you go to PCH firmware configuration and you have this nice little TPM device selection. And in the pull-down menu, you can pick either discrete TPM, which is the default in my case, or firmware TPM. Well, I want to use firmware TPM because that's the TPM that's built into my microprocessor, which is a Core i7-9700. So when I click firmware TPM, I get this nice little warning. It says Intel PTT. It's a, the TPM has different acronyms that describe it. It's a hardware implementation integrated, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and they talk about, you know, Windows BitLocker, the, you know, um, the key is, please note that when the recovery key is lost or when the BIOS ROM chip is replaced, the system will not boot into the operating system. And blah. okay, this would probably, you know, freak you out if you didn't know what you're doing, but you're not gonna break anything. So set it on firmware TPM and Bob's your uncle. Now, then you can reboot. And if you rerun the PC health check, uh, it'll say, oh, look, you can install Windows 11 now. There you go. Wasn't that easy? You didn't have to download any ISOs. You didn't have to do any nonsense. Just very simple. It's highly likely that there is a setting in your BIOS that will do this for you. Um, the other thing you'll probably want to enable is UEFI booting. Now, in the olden days, uh, we still kind of call it the BIOS, but what we actually are talking about is UEFI, the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface basically just the firmware, the code that runs when the computer first starts up, it sets up all your hardware devices, does some other crazy stuff before it passes control off to the operating system, in this case, Windows. So UEFI is great because it's newer, you can boot from, uh, if your C drive is larger than two terabytes, no problem, you can boot from it. The big uh, improvement is uh, quite simply that UEFI, it, it, it boots faster, your computer will boot faster into Windows. So, um, if you have an older computer, maybe that you built yourself or that you upgraded, your hard drive may have the, the MBR uh, boot partition and blah, blah, partition table, blah, blah, blah. You may not be using GPT. Um, you may be using a CSM compatibility support module. Uh, in your BIOS, it'll say CSM Auto, which I've even recommended to use before. Uh, you'll want to actually make sure that that's set to Windows UEFI mode. And you may also want to enable Secure Boot. Uh, how to do that is the question. So here we are back in the BIOS, and if I go to the boot menu and I click on secure boot, I, I can pick, you know, okay, OS type, Windows UEFI mode, secure, secure, secure boot is enabled. Um, but the thing that we're really concerned about here is how to actually convert. First of all, how do you actually know that your boot drive is MBR versus GPT? Because you need GPT in order to use UEFI. Well, I wrote this article, Convert Your Windows 10 Boot Drive from MBR to GPT, uh, way back in November 2017. I'll link to this down in the description, and this explains everything. What is UEFI, UEFI versus BIOS, uh, MBR versus GPT, what the heck does it all mean? Um, what do you need to do if you want to do UEFI booting and you want to enable secure boot? How do you do it? Because you have to use the MBR to GPT command and do a little conversion on the partition table of your hard drive. Um, yeah, normally what you have to do is download the Windows 10 uh, pre-install environment and it's kind of a hairy thing where you have to type in some commands. I've actually done it for you. Right here you have Windows 10 PE 21H1 ISO file. And as I note, uh, this version of the WinPE also works for versions 2004 and 20H2 of Windows 10. So if you want to, uh, if you, you can follow the, my instructions in this article, if you discover that your hard drive is M, uh, MBR, 
you can download this ISO file, use Rufus to burn it to a USB stick, boot from it, then you simply boot from WinPE from this ISO that you just downloaded, type in these, these uh, top secret commands, and then essentially I note here at the end uh, that on my ACES motherboard, this was almost four years ago, I didn't have to change the UEFI boot settings because I already had CSM auto and secure, secure boot equals other OS, but now I'm running in full UEFI plus GPT mode with no config changes. That's not actually true anymore. And in fact, uh, once you get to the UEFI mode, you convert your drive from MBR to GPT if necessary. You turn on full UEFI mode, forget about, you know, the le legacy anything. Then you can go back in your BIOS, as I showed, and enable secure boot. So if you want to, if you want to be all futuristic and up to date, you can go through all this nonsense, and then you will be 100% compatible with Windows 11. But really, you don't need to. Um, this is all kind of a lot of um, nonsense, really, because in the end, as I said, uh, it's extremely likely that if your computer is 10 years old or less, Microsoft will make it so that Windows 11 runs in your computer and everything will be fine. So if you want to go all full techie, you can, but uh, otherwise just sit tight and wait for the final version and upgrade for free to Windows 11. Finally, I should probably note, uh, you're probably thinking, right, do I really want Windows 11? I mean, Windows 10 with the updates, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's like kind of crap. So like, why would I want Windows 11? Yeah, the reason you want Windows 11 is because now that Microsoft is working on Windows 11, all of their time and energy is going to be devoted to that. They're not going to, right, they're basically just going to let Windows 10 sort of stagnate for the most part. Uh, so one of the things that they're supposedly changing in Windows 11 is how they update again. And I'm hoping, against hope, that the uh, update process in Windows 11 will actually be an improvement and it won't be uh, all these, uh, you know, destructive Windows updates that everyone has been complaining about. So, but that is actually a good reason. Uh, Windows 10 will continue to be supported through, I believe it is October 2025, but ultimately you're probably just going to want Windows 11 uh, because hopefully, despite the uh, utter chaos about, you know, will I be able to install it or not, uh, eventually it's probably going to be better than Windows 10. So, yeah. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.